awesome thing of the week? My awesome thing of the week is um, the Startup Weekend Pittsburgh Women's Edition. Um, it was a startup weekend for anyone who doesn't know. It's like a 54-hour hackathon, basically, where you start with one um, group of people. Some know each other, some don't. Some have ideas for startups, some don't. Um, and they get together and they hash out ideas over a weekend, and then they present them to a panel of experts uh, on Sunday night. And this one was um, specifically for women, aimed at not just women-owned businesses or businesses for women, but to encourage more women to participate because they had seen with past events that they weren't getting a lot of participation from women coming forth with ideas or being part of the team. It's not that they weren't having any, but they, they weren't having the degree that they were hoping for. So this one, I mean, the, the ideas that came out of it, I was really um, impressed with, you know, so the level of, of thoughtfulness that went into the ideas and the one that won, you know, the owner or the owner, the founder, I guess she'd be called, she said to me, she didn't think that her idea would have been as successful if there had been equal numbers of men and women in the audience, because the women in the audience and the women who were part of it got it. They understood why it was a good idea, like what the concept was, and they all it really resonated with them. It might not have if it was a more, you know, male focused or male dominated audience. So it was sort of an interesting, you know, thing all around. I think. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was a part of it. I was actually the one behind the live streamer uh, switching all night long, both the uh, Friday and, and Sunday sessions. Uh, okay. Part of part of, of course, work hard. Uh, they had their streaming rig on hand uh, for this as well. Um, but uh, it, and, and, and having attended in some aspect, the last, I think, two startup weekends that happened, which was a civic and then the general startup weekend. Yeah. I, I was the last one that was over in Allentown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was really surprised at the number of what I thought, in my opinion, could be viable businesses out of the, uh, I guess, officially 12 that, that, that presented. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, very much so. I mean, I mean, you've seen this, like, you know, you cover and cover, and, you know, we've talked about on the awesome chat, how your beat is really kind of looking at these startups and technology as well yeah. as what we do here. And, and, and you know, the deal when we're like, we're going to do an app that does this and this and this, and right. you just kind of roll your eyes and be like, is yeah. this really something somebody's going to use? Right. Is, this is, is the Uber for whatever, you know, everyone's going right. to Uber for something, right? <laughs> like, exactly. And it's, like, it's not Uber, maybe, just, you know, random. <laughs> And it was yeah. less so, like, even when there was an app involved, like, what they were doing over the shadowed the fact that it was an app, which I yeah. thought was done really, really, really well. Yeah, I did not envy the judges. I mean, it was a really hard call, I think, to, to pick a winner because all the ideas were really solid. And even if they weren't fully fleshed out, they, they had a basis in, you know, kind of that, that pain point that, that inspires a lot of startups, you know, that they have a problem that, you know, there's a way to solve this, but they don't quite have the, maybe the technical expertise or the connections or whatever. And it was sort of a nice example of how startup weekends can help those ideas come to fruition. You know, that if, if it's an idea, you're not sure, you don't know if it's viable, if it's going to get, it has any, you know, any ability to be funded. You know, it can be really intimidating to kind of jump into that scene if you're not already in it. You know, the tech the scene can be intimidating to try to break into, I think, especially startups. And a lot of people think that they don't have a, a technical background, they're not a developer, that they can't participate, or that they'll be, you know, they're not going to be as qualified or whatever. But it's a really nice, welcoming atmosphere. I mean, they work hard. It's not party time, but it's definitely a nice way to sort of ease people into that and not feel intimidated, not feel like they're, you know, kind of the, the kid in the room who doesn't know anything. So I really love the the format, but I just thought this one was just so interesting. Like you said, the the ideas for the businesses were so good, so like well thought out that you could tell a lot of them were they weren't like, hey, I just saw this idea on Friday night. They, these were ideas that have been sort of kicking around for a while. It seemed like to me anyway. Yeah, and, and like I said, very very strong. So we, we mentioned kind of offhand like the 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 people that won. Uh, uh, tell tell us what you thought about uh, well one who was it that won and, and what really kind of struck you with it. And I think it's a perfect example of something that would not have um, gotten so far if this wasn't a women's event. Yeah, yeah. So it was called Go Jane Go, and it was an it's a it's going to be an app that will let women who are traveling for business, who are traveling solo, and find themselves with maybe some free time in their calendar, that they'll be able to connect with other women for networking or connect for events or for social. You know, it's it's like a membership base, so you'll know who you're dealing with. You know, you'll know that it's someone that's been you know part of the community, that's part of the the organization that they're going to try to build. 
you know, because when you're traveling by yourself in a, in a city that you don't know, it's you don't want to necessarily venture out, just go to a bar and hang out and have a drink. You know, because if you're by yourself, you're a woman, it's not always safe. It's not always, you know, it's not fun. But you don't want to sit in your hotel room the whole time. If you've got, you know, a couple hours before whatever you're in, you know, your business has you in town for, or if you have something canceled, you know, it's a shame to go to a big city and not have something to do or someone to connect with or, you know, what's a cool restaurant or what's a good, you know, place to go to get a manicure, whatever. So it's a really interesting idea. And like the um, the founder said to me, she said, I don't know because that this would have resonated with an audience of men because she explained it to her coworker, she explained it to her husband, and they're all kind of like, I don't really get it. I don't, I don't understand why this would be you know, something that people would want. But it was, there were a lot of nodding heads in that audience when they were explaining the idea. So it seems, like an inter- on something. it seems like an interesting idea too, from the aspect of what happens if you last minute had, couldn't make the conference, you could also make, I feel like those conferences are a major way to meet people mm-hmm. and to foster a relationship and bounce ideas in, in, in the future off of others. Yeah. And there's, there's no good way to kind of create that relationship if you don't go to those conferences yeah. so even if, if you're if you're a last minute cancellation for whatever emergency i think it could be a good way to to create and bridge the gap if, if you can't make the conference as well yeah and the, the problem i sometimes have especially with with journalism conferences is there's different sessions lined up at different times i sometimes want to go to one that you know is on a time that conflicts with another one and so you know to me having a way to connect with people that may be at the con- at a conference even if they're not at the same conference or in town at the same time in the same field whatever so that you know maybe we could double up and find out you know what was good about this session that you went to versus the one that was at the same time because that's what ends up happening things get scheduled at the same time but i think with this app it's not just we're all going to this concert together it was you know i'm going to be in town i don't know anyone in chicago for instance you know so where's a good place for me to go get a drink or who's someone I could meet up with that I could you know, have a meal with, or what are people, you know, what are the connections I can make, you know, as part of my job, but not necessarily the specific thing I'm in town for. Certainly. So, yeah. I thought it was really cool because you don't want to walk into a bar by yourself in a strange city. I mean, that's just, you know, as, as soon as you say that guys are like, Oh yeah, that doesn't, that sounds kind of intimidating. So and it's not necessarily a, a lack of sense of adventure. You know, it's, it's, you want to see the city that you don't know. You want to try and make the most of it while you're in town. But you know, where do you start when you leave the hotel room? You know, you don't really know. Right. You know, and, 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 and the safety level is different. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. it certainly is different. There's other things that you have to watch out for that a guy doesn't. And, and, and yeah. this is, will uh, ideally this would kind of lean into that idea. So yeah, certainly. Um, yeah. There were, there were a couple Oh, go ahead. I was just it was interesting to me that how many of the ideas focused around connection, like making other connections, whether it was, uh, I think it was called We Do, that wanted to try and connect people with, you know, ways to do your wedding a little less uh, expensively. And, you know, Wander Trust, which was, you know, going to another city and meeting people, um, you know, who are other, who are, you're a traveler and you want to experience other cities through sort of the eyes of a local. It was just interesting how, how connections seem to be this really common thread through a lot of the ideas that were coming up. There was one that was a, a connecting, trying to connect you to match to the perfect dog instead of going into yeah. a shelter and walking yeah. out with the dog that licked your hand, you know, and, right. and hoping right. it works when you out. Get home, you don't, then you're not a good fit. Yeah. Right. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and I thought it was interesting because one of the questions of that was, well, how, what are you going to do for breeders? And they're like, well, breeders don't need our help. Yeah. We're helping shelters. Right. So, right. and, and, and I thought it was a pretty good idea. Sadly, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't place anything. What I hope is an idea that, that kind of continues. And, and a lot of these can't. A lot of these are viable enough. They can yeah. out of this. They, there, a lot of groundwork has been done uh, to start a lot of these up. So Yeah, for sure. I was impressed by, and I don't know if you caught a lot of this, especially in that period while the judges were out. There was, um, you know, usually they just kind of break and everybody mills around for a little bit and everything. Yeah. Uh, from, from my experience. But there was like, it was like a, a rally. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it seemed like the groups were really supportive of each other. It wasn't, you know, it was competitive, sure, but it wasn't like, I don't know, so cutthroat or so. You, you definitely felt like everyone was rooting for everybody else. I don't know. It was a sort of a nice, a nice vibe. I think came off the whole thing. Certainly, certainly. Um, but it was a, it, it was a really good weekend. Uh, was there anybody else from the, uh, at least the top list, or anybody that maybe didn't uh, make it through the final that kind of stuck out for you? Um, the one, I think it was called Little School. That was a really interesting concept, you know, to sort of make um, 
um, learning and make school more creatively oriented for kids. I thought that was kind of a nice idea. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones because there were so many good ones. There were so many, you know, interesting. The one, the one that I sort of chuckled at was Jelly Selly about how to find a way to sell jelly beans. Because like, who, who would think of that? But it was sort of a, a like a little quirky idea that, you know, she was obviously having a lot of fun with. So it's, and that's half the, I love seeing the presentations in those things. It's half the time, you know, they always say, you know, you bet on the jockey, not the horse when you're, when you're looking at, um, when you're looking at, uh, at startups and how you're going to fund them. Like that's sort of what VCs say, I guess. But, mm-hmm. but, you know, I love seeing the presentations and seeing the enthusiasm behind them. And you can tell when someone's been really with an idea for a long time and they really believe in it, you know, because they really, they get up there and they, they convince you with how bad the problem is and how much it has to get solved. So I love, I love just seeing the, you know, kind of that spark of, of interest and, and when you're really passionate about an idea, just that's come, that comes across. That's awesome. I, I've yeah. been really fortunate with, with doing, doing these live streams. They're, they tend to be events like this that are actually yeah. like, are actually interesting, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. Um, especially in the tech side, the startup side. And I was, I, I, I couldn't believe how, uh, 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 how informative a lot of these were, how interesting a lot of these presentations were. And and um, and I don't know if you got to see the the initial night. Um, how entertaining the the icebreaker was when they're coming up with their fake yes, business. The icebreaker. I wish I would have gone to it. No, I I've always heard that the icebreaker is really fun because you know you've always got someone who's it's their first time there and they're maybe feeling like oh, what am I doing here? Mm. But it's, it's it's a welcoming atmosphere. It's a welcoming group, and you know it's just all the support staff like you and and Josh Lucas and Mike Wojcik and everyone who's kind of always around for these things. It's always nice to have sort of that core group of people who are, you know, you always, you can always count on them being there for this kind of stuff. I think that that makes a big difference. It's a very, very under celebrated segment of our, of our tech community, I think. So Certainly. I'm glad when these kind of events highlight how great everything is. Certainly in, in, in a world where the, the conversation often comes, comes up about diversity and, um, and, and, and women being represented in, in, in STEM in the tech sector yeah. um, to have, I think the numbers I saw, there were 80 women and five men that signed up for this event. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was definitely predominantly women. I mean, I, I didn't really do a count, but that is, uh, I mean, that's impressive that you would get that kind of interest. And I think mm-hmm. you know, I was talking to um, Jackie after one of the organizers afterwards and she said, yeah, they, they do want to try and do another one. So they're looking for people to volunteer good, and, good. and come up with some ideas. I hope that they do. I think it was a really good, you know, obviously they tested the idea and it was met with a lot of good response. So hopefully that, uh, I hope they do another one. Uh, one other thing from the first night, there were um, actually, uh, I think there was an eight year old that presented. I, I don't, I think it was another one, but I know Mike Wojcik, you, you mentioned before, was there with his, uh, with his daughter. And they, they, they talked about how they were impressed because she knows what Shark Tank is. Right. Like she's completely already looking oh, at adorable. that world. So <laughs> that's adorable. I kind of feel like that's suiting for my suitable for my Koichek's Kindle, like kind of in that startup space. <laughs> like, uh, we were trying to debate on whether she would have her own company by 15 or 12. Uh, between oh, Missy and uh, I, so. Easily by at least, you know, 15. She'll be the CEO of at least two. Companies. She <laughs> sold she'll have sold her first company. Exactly. And then she'll to like her second or third. Company. Well, she'll be like be- a super- well, I'll be working for her. Um, oh, anyways, all right. Well, you want if you want to check out uh, how the weekend went, if you go over to uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh's YouTube page, it's uh, youtube.com slash work hard PGH. Uh, both of the uh, nights, uh, you probably just want to uh, dip dip into the final pitches. But actually, if you look over on our social media, on uh, especially the Awesome Cast Facebook group, I have a direct link to the point from Friday night's presentation where the the fake companies are pitched, and all I can tell you is hashtag poop classy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, people can explore that one on their own. I'll you can explore there. that <laughs> on your own. I'll just leave that there. Uh, so like, I know some of you guys will automatically be interested in that. They drew, <laughs> they drew the emoticon with a hat. It's it's amazing.